Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Co where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Now here are five things you probably didn't know about forms in Webflow. Or is it six? Or is it four? I don't know. Enjoy. Inputs need labels. Uh, this is kind of written into the core of uh, web uh, the W3C, the what kind of web fundamentals and accessibility guidelines. Webflow handles labels um, really uh, terribly. So I read from a Webflow employee that Webflow will link an input and a label when they're next to each other. And I've never got that to work. So what I always end up doing is creating a HTML embed element. You link the two by using the ID of the input you take that ID and when you create a label, you put the for tag there. So a form is essentially wrapping a set of elements or inputs that denote a kind of block of content. If you want two forms on a page, for instance, that's two separate uh, blocks of content that you, want to, uh, that you want to send. You can't send both of them at the same time. If you want those things, then you need to wrap it in, in just a single form and use that to send all the data that you, you kind of want to receive on the back end. Kind of another tip or, or another kind of um, gotcha when it comes to, to forms. Webflow by default will set the size of the text of an input to 14. Now, accessibility guidelines say the minimum size for font should be 16. When you use your, your form on mobile, and you click on that input element, it will actually zoom in to that input element. And that's because the font size is too small. If you set it to 16, then you won't get any of that zooming um, sort of functionality or zooming kind of assistance. It's there to help people because the font size is too small. So another thing about forms as well is that forms require a submit button, a single submit button. That will enable the user to click enter, which which often, again, I do, you know, for, for a login, if I'm logging in, with my username and password, I'll hit enter to actually submit that form. Form name is interesting. So this will be the name of the form when it gets submitted to the Webflow CMS or the, the Webflow backend. Uh, the interesting thing about the form name is that you can actually use it to place a submit button outside of the form because the submit button needs to be in the form for it to work. You can place a submit button outside the form um, and by setting a form attribute on that input then you can you can then link it the form to it and then that for that button will then submit the form so the action is where you send your data and this is again where it gets a bit complex it will be essentially a url that you can use to to where you want to send your data to if we have we've got our form here if we set the name to q and we set the form to google slash search it's going to get Whatever the value of this will be, it will send it to Google and navigate to that page. And we hit enter. And what we'll see is that there's our there's our query there. But that wraps up just kind of everything I wanted to go over in this in this episode. Um, if you like this episode and want to hear more, then I'd really appreciate uh, a subscribe. I want to kind of get this channel monotonized and I can only do that with a certain amount of subscribers. Uh, it really motivates me to make more content like this. This episode was taken from a longer, more in-depth explanation of the subject matter. So if you're interested to learn more, then I suggest you click the link up in the card. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. And until next time, happy no coding.